We're going to briefly talk here about Pythagorean triples. So Pythagorean triples only apply to right triangles, and right triangles are triangles that have like a right angle. So it's pretty common knowledge, I suppose, by the time you get to some level of math that you have three sides of a triangle. Let's try this again. Um, when we when we talk about triangles and right triangles in particular, the Pythagorean theorem is usually the first thing you learn. And you have this, this thing out there that's called a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And that's the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to talk about Pythagorean triples here in a second. But the idea is that a side squared plus a side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And again, this is a thing where you don't want to be just memorizing formulas. You want to understand what they mean. So I can't just come in here and label A wherever I feel like it. Um, I can, well, I can, sort of. I can put an A on a side or I can put A on this side, A or B. But the C always has to be the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle. So we have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Now, everything that... Um, I'll just label it like that. A squared plus B squared is C squared. Now, um, there are some integers that fit really, really well into the idea of this A squared plus B squared is C squared. Um, so, for example, 3 squared plus 4 squared, well, that would be 9 plus 16, which is 25, which is the same thing as 5 squared. So, Pythagorean triple would be 3, 4, and 5. Which is great because if you give me a right triangle, and I'm specifically just so you know, I'm drawing my right triangles obnoxiously because it doesn't matter if they're drawn to scale. All that matters is that they're labeled correctly. So if I label this one 3 and this one 4, then you don't have to do the Pythagorean formula. You can just come in here and label this 5. But actually, it works for any multiple. So if I don't just go 3, 4, 5, I could say 30, 40. And then you could come in here and say 50. Or if I came in here and I said that this one was 10 and this one was 8, all right, now what you could do is you could recognize that there's this Pythagorean triple thing going. So you've got 5 times 2, 4 times 2, which means this side has to be 3 times 2 or 6. Make sense? So just to make sure you kind of understand what's going on, um, I'm going to throw down this uh doo -doo 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 -doo. all right so find wait that is not right ah math is crazy um that's what i meant to do so if i have that there come up with the missing side so um pause the video and make sure you can come up with that and we'll assume that happened so um again recognizing that this is a three four five you've got five times four and 4 times 4, so this would have to be a 3 times 4, making this a side of 12. All right? So the Pythagorean triples, 3, 4, 5. Now there are other ones that also meet this. And um, let's see, Pythagorean triples to memorize. Um, and the reason I say to memorize these is if you're watching this video, you're probably going to some kind of a science-y thing, or at least taking a science-y class. And um, like I know, for example, when we take teach statics, um, you know, there'll be a vector and it'll be like, you know, 8, 15. And no one ever complains that they have too much free time on exams. So if you know your Pythagorean triple, you can just go in there and throw down a 17 um, because that is a, a standard kind of a Pythagorean triple or, um, or the vector might be labeled with a, you know, and a 5 and a 12. And then you just go, okay, so that side's 13 and you move on and your professor is going to do that. And you're going to be sitting there and one raising your hand going, wait, where'd you get that 13 from so quickly? And how come you knew that? And blah, 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 blah. So to avoid being that person who asks those questions, here's the Pythagorean triples you need to memorize. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and 8, 15, 17. Now be careful because these Pythagorean triples only work if the triple part, triple part, the third one is on the hypotenuse. So for example, if I gave you something ah, here that said, I don't know, three and four, this is whatever it is, it's not five, right? It's not five, we'll call it X. That side would be X squared plus three squared is equal to four squared, so actually, x would be equal to 16 minus 9 square root. So x in this case is actually, 
wait, math is hard, the uh, square root of 7. Okay, so it's really important that these here, the longest sides, are still the longest sides of the hypotenuse. Okay, so those definitely need to be the hypotenuse. Now, if anyone ever asks you, you know, give me like three Pythagorean triples, they're looking for three unique ones. So you can't go 3, 4, 5, 30, 40, 50, 300, 400, 500. You know, if they're asking you for Pythagorean triples, um, you should say like 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. Those just need to roll off the tongue, kind of like the alphabet. Um, you're like, wait a second, alphabet's hard. I know alphabet's hard. Uh, but definitely these are some basic Pythagorean triples to know and to just be able to recognize the, um, whatever you call it, recognize them when you see them kind of out in the field. So here are some examples for you to play with. Um, notice that I'm specifically not drawing triangles that look like right triangles because again, you just need to know the you need to know what's going on even when it's not pretty. So, for example, since this here is the high, is the um, right triangle, then that means whatever is opposite from the right triangle side, that's the or sorry, let me try this again. Yeah, whatever is opposite from the right triangle mark, that's going to be the hypotenuse. So now pause the video and see if you can figure out what some of these are without a calculator. You shouldn't need a calculator to do this. Okay, now assuming you've done that, um, something that you can do is you can kind of see, well, what do these have in common? Um, let's start with this one because it looks a little less intimidating. So I can say, okay, well, if I divide, they both have a common factor of 5. So if I go, that's going to be 5 times uh, 3. And this is going to be 5 times 4. Oh, that's a 3, 4, 5. So you can recognize the 3, the 4, and then that'll be a 5. Now, to get them all scaled, these were all scaled by 5, so 5 times 5, so the answer here is going to be 25, okay? Now, for these others, let's do this one down here, because again, that one looks less scary. Um, 15 divided by 15 times 2, so I have 15 times 2, and this is 17 times 2, all right? Now, I know I have a Pythagorean triple with a 17 on the end, so that's going to be 8, 15, 17, 8, 15, 17, and then times 2, so that side here is going to be 16. Now, on the off chance that you look at 196 and you can't immediately get out of it, you know, you can you can have it for a couple of times. Um, so I can say, well, 196. So 100 breaks into 50 and 2. 96 breaks into 2. And um, hold on, I can math, I can math, I can math, I swear I can. 48. 48. Now this will break out again into 2 and 25, and this will break out again into 2 and uh, da, 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 24. All right, so that's going to be 4 times 25, and then they don't have any, the 24 and the 25 don't have anything in common, and this is 4 times 24. So I've got 4 times 24, 4 times 25, and again, I see the 24, 25, and I should know, I have a Pythagorean triple of 7, 24, 25. So I can come in here now and I can throw in a, a 28. And of course, the benefit of this is, especially for this problem that I just did, if you were trying to do that using regular Pythagorean theorem, I mean, it's totally doable, except that if you're trying to do it without a calculator, you have 100 squared plus 96 squared is equal to x squared. So that means you would actually have to you know, do 96 squared by hand and be like, uh, I don't know, blah, and then try to find the square root of a super, super huge number, which again is possible, it's just not very time effective. So if you know your Pythagorean triples, it allows you to shortcut a lot of this more annoying math that you might have to do.